When it comes to our bodies, it does seem like a lot of things can go wrong. But what happens when your body's efforts to heal itself, to heal a wound, are actually worse than the wound itself? Well, let's have a look. My name is Luke. I'm 23 years old, and I have keloid scars. The keloid scars that I have are on my chest and my shoulders. I had acne on my face through my childhood like any normal kid, and then I did spread to my chest and my shoulders, where it is now keloid scars. Dealing with the keloid scars is not easy because they always itch. They always seem to itch before I go to bed, which always keeps me awake. I often itch them so much that it causes them to bleed. When I do reveal my scars in public, I can see people are disgusted. You can see it in their face. I used to hug family members freely, but now I think twice in fear that they might feel my scars. I don't want to feel self-conscious about my scars anymore. What's going on? I'm here because I have keloid scars on my upper body. Do you mind if we take a look? See what they look yeah. like? Yes. Yes, you do have keloids, mainly on your chest here and on your upper back, your shoulders as well. You know, these are really common places to actually have keloids because this is an area of high tension. Sometimes you might think, why don't I just cut them out? You know, why don't we just remove them? Well, the reason you don't want to do something like that is because these were triggered by trauma themselves you can actually just make it come right back again. We can calm them down with certain treatments. One of the most common things we do is intralesional steroids. Another thing that I'd like to do is treat you with a laser that works really well to help minimize the redness and perhaps also minimize the, the firmness. All right, so let's get started here. We're going to inject some of these keloids with an intralesional steroid. This is a very common procedure. We're injecting it directly into the keloid to really make it shrink down, to soften it, to decrease the redness, to really calm down those cells and they're those fibroblasts that are really revved up and excited. The area is blanching, it's kind of whitening because when we inject this white uh, solution in, I can tell that it's going right into the area that I want it to. So we're gonna use another method. We're gonna use something called a Dermajet. This is a nice way to inject or to put steroid into a keloid as well because it's very precise. We're using an air gun, really. What's really nice about this is it doesn't require a needle, nothing sharp, but it will feel like a little snap of a rubber band. Now we're finished with the steroid injections and we're going to treat you with a V-beam laser, okay? All right. I'm gonna have you lean forward a little bit so we can treat some of them on your back here, okay? You ready? Yep. What you're gonna feel is there's gonna be an initial cold spray right before the zap of the laser. It feels like a little rubber band or a little flick onto your skin. What this laser is doing is it's specifically targeting blood vessels. We use it to destroy the blood vessels. So in doing so, cutting off the blood supply to the fibroblast of the keloid and hopefully slowing down as well. We're gonna do one more here, ready? One, two, three. Perfect, that's it, we're all done, easy. So we are done for the day, but you are not finished. As you know, this does require multiple treatments. It's not a single time treatment, and hopefully we can get it completed in three to five treatments or so. Thank you. We're so happy Dr. Lee could help get Luke back on track to lessen the appearance of his keloids. And we want to thank Dr. Barry Labine for providing Luke with five follow-up laser therapy sessions as well as steroid injections. We're going to keep you all posted on Luke's progress. Stick around. We've got more of our Gross Anatomy Special Edition coming up next.